thank you so much for joining me for another Sunday Afternoons with Reverend Lucretia. So today's talk is titled The Prison of Comfort and our song is There's a Winner in You by Patti LaBelle. And again, the link to the song is down in the description below. So please feel free if you'd like to listen to the song before the talk to go ahead and click on that. All right, all right. So as you know, I usually try to sum up my talks in three or four words. And the ones for this week are good is the enemy of the best. So we're gonna be talking about, as the song says, despite all that you've been through, there's a winner in you. God does not want you to settle for anything less than joy, abundance, health, financial prosperity, authentic, loving, genuine relationships, and the ability to chase your dreams, whatever they are, to their ultimate completion. So we will be talking about scriptural references to overcoming and the parable of the mustard seed and about growth rings and how to apply them to stretch. And we have an amazing hero story. So mostly we will be talking about potential and that God has put dreams in your heart. Some of them we have ignored for way too long. We will discuss how good is the enemy of the best and why stagnating and staying stuck in our comfort zone limits our ability to be happy, joyous, and free. So happy can mean waking up in the morning with an awareness all of the blessings that the day brings, a joy about experiencing another day of life, and excitement about being alive, or it can be about taking the steps that are necessary on your path to achieve the goals that you have set for yourself. We have the ability, because God lives inside us, to overcome any obstacles as soon as we acknowledge that God's strength changes the very structure of who we are. Remember the song says, there's a winner in you, that winner inside you is God. First John 4, 4 says, you dear children are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. We alone may not have the fortitude to keep on going on a daily basis, but when we keep our eye on the goals that we have set for ourselves and understand that all of our power comes from God, we can live lives that are magnificent in appreciating all of the simple joys in life as well as all of our big triumphs along the way. Luke 10, 9 says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will hurt you. So the enemy is stagnation. The enemy is being afraid to try. The enemy is giving up and giving in to fatigue and having lack of faith that we don't have the strength to achieve anything that we want. Denzel Washington says, ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. So keep on moving, keep on growing, keep on learning. If you want success of any kind, you must leave your comfort zone for better health, finances, relationships, goals, dreams, and a future life. Joshua 1.5 says, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. This means that the one who lives inside us, God gives us the abilities and the strength and the wisdom and the answers. We alone of ourselves may not have the strength or the power, but I can do all things through God who strengthens me. That's Philippians 4.13. So Joey Schweitzer is a YouTuber who has um, podcasts and does talks on how to achieve your goals and how to stretch and how to grow and how to be the best person you can be. Um, and he has a website called Better Ideas. And he says, in order to grow and be your best self, you need to make values-based decisions. So in other words, you have to choose the values that you want to live by. If you say that you want to be courageous and strong, that means that your activities have got to be in alignment with those values that you choose. Um, he says the further outside your comfort zone you go, the more mental resistance you're going to get. 
And he also reminds us that our comfort zone is shrinking every time we don't go outside of it. So if you're sitting on the couch doing the same thing, eating the same foods, never going anywhere different, never exposing yourself to new ideas, your comfort zone is just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. He says, the longer you live your new life with challenges, the more the comfort zone is expanding to meet you. He says, I focus on living the life I wanna live and I disregard comfort, discomfort altogether. When I don't let discomfort affect how I make a decision, the potential expands dramatically. He says, we get caught up in the stuff we wanna have happen and we forget that some sort of transformation likely has to take place. So he gives us a few tools that we can use, such as visualize the end goal, but enjoy the process. You know, we talk all the time about living in the moment and the way to live your best and happiest and most joyous life is by being present all the time. He reminds us that stagnation breeds destruction. He says, love the daily discipline in the present moment. He says, tell yourself, this is something I like doing. It is part of who I am. So when you start a new habit, if it's going to the gym and you're feeling like you don't want to do it, tell yourself, I am a strong athletic person. This is something I like doing. And get your mind to start accepting those ideas. He says, practice something called habit bunching. So habit bunching is when you take a new skill that you're not too good at and you align it with a skill that you already have mastered that's second nature to you or something that you do on a regular basis. So for instance, when you get up, I get up in the morning, I make a cup of coffee. It's something I can do in my sleep. It's something I don't have to think about at all. And I have a new skill that I'm journaling. I have this new app called the Journey app. And so now when I make myself my cup of coffee, I just turn on my app and I do my journaling and I tie them both together so that I remember every time now that when I make a cup of coffee, I wanna do this new journaling that I'm doing. So that's habit bunching. Remember that you're here on this planet to grow and expand and commit, make a commitment to yourself to have constant growth. And know that discomfort is the only way to develop new knowledge and awareness. Try things you've not tried, this is how you grow. So I'm not a very good cook, I don't like to cook very much, but I'm really aware that processed foods are bad for me. And so when I went to pick up the uh, food to deliver to my cancer patients, the farm had delivered way too many potatoes. So I went home with a bag of potatoes and I'm like, what the heck am I gonna do with these? And so I, you know, obviously I got online. I, I ended up making these mashed potatoes that were really, really good. And it was astonishing to me because it was so easy. Um, but it really just, it just is one more example. You get out of your comfort zone, you do something new. Another thing is I really, really like to travel, but when I do, I get very anxious. And um, I remember a long time ago when I went to my first retreat, I had been looking forward to this retreat. It was in a monastery in upstate New York. And it was in the winter time and I had to drive to all this snow, but I really had wanted to go. And when I got there, um, I was glad to be there, but I was also overwhelmed with fear and anxiety. And I woke up the next day with a migraine and feeling very, very sick. And I was like, this is not who I want to be. And I prayed to God and said, please just teach me how to get through this. I really want to enjoy this experience. And so I've since learned that when I go someplace new, I'm gonna have a little bit of anxiety. I'm not gonna know where everything is. I'm not gonna know how to get everywhere I need to go if I'm in a new neighborhood, but that I understand that I'm always gonna be able to get through it and learn what I need to learn. And that if I just accept that that anxiety is gonna be there because I'm out of my comfort zone, then I can go ahead and enjoy it. And I've learned to do that over the years and now I can go somewhere new and have a really, really good time. So it also talks about doing the things that you know within your heart you should have started a long time ago. So time to start dreaming again and going after what is always yours is what he says. Life will begin to support you and open new doors for you and introduce you to the people that will take you to the next level so that you can develop into the person you always wanted to become. So Jace Downey is another uh, transformational coach who talks about how to expand. And she reminds us that leaving the comfort zone will always create fear and anxiety, but there is no deep growth or transformation that happens in the comfort zone. So any more that you want, so more happiness, health, friends, love, success requires stretching. And again, good is the enemy of the best. 
So uh, in a TED talk called Why Comfort Will Ruin Your Life by Bill Ekstrom, um, he researched 50,000 coaching sessions to develop what he calls growth rings. So um, he believes that being in discomfort is the only way to sustain growth. So he is the CEO of Excel Institute. Uh, he says discomfort is is the departure from your regular life. Um, and so what happened to him was he was a big CEO in a company. Um, he was making lots of money. He had lots of perks. And all of those were taken away from him in a heartbeat when he was called into the president's office and he was fired. Um, but he's now learned that he says, quote, what makes you uncomfortable can ruin you. And what makes you uncomfortable is the only way to grow. Only in the state of discomfort can you continually grow. So he developed these things called growth rings, which are the living environment that either promotes or hinders growth. So he talked about the size of a goldfish is dependent on the environment. So if you have a goldfish in a tiny little goldfish bowl, it's going to be small. But he has this picture on his website of this huge big goldsmith, goldfish um, that he placed in a pond and it grew bigger and bigger and bigger. So he says, uh, safe equals limiting, stagnation equals low growth, stifles creativity and independent thought and action. The opposite of stagnation is chaos. So he says this also promotes low growth and low performing, zero predictability or control over the input or the outcomes. So up from stagnation is order and what you do leads to predictable outcomes. But that can lead to comfort. And he says, anytime you continually think about or do the same thing in the same way, you stop growing. So he says, when you feel discomfort hit, that means you've entered the complexity ring. So order and change are no longer predictable. This is what calls the uncomfortability. The response is just, is not just no, he says, but hell no. So when you're consciously acknowledge that you're in the discomfort, you choose complexity over order. So he says discomfort is only uh, environment where sustained or exponential growth can occur. So complexity comes in three ways. Uh, the first is that is forced upon you and whether or not you will grow depends on how you respond to that. Number two is someone can help you get there. So like parents or teachers or sometimes bosses, coaches, they can also help you to stretch. He says because subconsciously you're going to always want to go back to comfort and order. And sometimes you need to be pushed by someone on the outside. Um, by the way, enablers, sometimes you'll have friends. So enablers want you to stay comfortable. They don't want you to grow. So sometimes when you're growing and you're changing and you're expanding, some of your friends will not be helpful to you. And you need to just pay attention that you you're growing and you're changing and you're making a decision to go ahead. And you need to sometimes have some uncomfortable conversations with your friends, but do be aware that some people will try to hold you back when you're changing. So the third way is to trigger complexity. He says, constantly put yourself in situations that will cause you to stretch. Ask yourself to do things that have never done before. Go someplace that you've never been. Try a skill you've never had. Expose yourself to new ideas and new ways of thinking. And he says, um, to start in small steps. So we're not asking you to jump into this, really to leap into this unknown territory. We're asking you to take tiny little steps to go forward on your path to grow. So Lao Tzu says, a journey of 1,000 miles begins with a thing, single step. So Dr. Serene Jones, in a book that she wrote called What Did Jesus Ask, says, the constant facade of order hides the wilderness that is craving to seep out and teach us that life isn't what we thought it was created to be. We must experience the wilderness to be taught what otherwise cannot be known. And so in his talk, he talks about what you should fear the most is your own unwillingness to accept or seek discomfort that will dictate the amount of growth that you have. So Proverbs 2013 says, do not love sleep or you will grow poor. Stay awake and you will have food to spare. I love Proverbs because they're these tiny little snippets of wisdom. They're just really short little quotes that you can keep in your mind. And that one to me just summed it up really, really well. So there are two kinds of growth. There is outside action oriented growth and there is spiritual growth. So you can't have the outer without the inner first. 
So we're going to talk about the parable of the mustard seed because that explains again the whole thought of going in tiny little baby steps so that you can make huge, big, magnificent growth. So Matthew 13, 31 says, The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. So again, the mustard seed is a really small seed and it grows into a large tree, many, many, many times bigger than what it started out. So Matthew 17, 20 says, For truly I say to you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move and nothing will be impossible to you. So small baby steps get huge results, expansion of who you are and who you were meant to be. You have to get out of your spiritual comfort zone. So the revealing word says that spiritual growth equals the increase of God in man. All growth is first in mind and depends on the standards we are holding in mind. A high spiritual standard has lifting power. All growth and unfoldment are based on the law. What we honestly desire and persistently affirm will be ours if we faint not. And that little thing about fading not is from Galatians 6, 9. So he says, overcoming means coming over to Christ consciousness. It is in reality the growing consciousness of one's power to master any condition or situation mentally, morally, physically, or environmentally through one's faculties supervised by Christ. Charles Fillmore says, if he is overwhelmed by difficulties, jarred by discords, disheartened by failures, he will, by asking spirit, learn what mountains of error must be removed to make straight the way of the Lord. As he studies the principle of truth and grows in understanding, he gains a high standard of living. So man is to overcome all that is unlike God, the good, in his consciousness, body, world of affairs, all of his thoughts, fears, feelings, concepts, beliefs, actions, and appearances that do not measure up to the standard of Christ's perfection and order. I believe God did not want us to leave lives that were mediocre, dull, or lacking in joy, health, abundance, or love. When we stay within our comfort zone and don't stretch ourselves and stop growing, we are not leading lives that fulfill our potential. I really believe it's about living up to our potential. I'm not asking you to have unrealistic pipe dreams. I'm just asking you to stretch and stretch and stretch a little bit, a little bit, a little bit until you start being the full magnificent human being that you're supposed to be. Uh, don't be afraid to give up the good to go for the best. That's from John D. Rockefeller. So our hero story is someone named Nono Kapoka. He was a speaker and podcaster. His podcast is called No, No, Yes, Yes. And so he had an international project called Biking Borders. So he and his buddy Max Jobs uh, took nine months and cycled 15,000 kilometers through snow, danger, and heat to fund his dream. So 15,000 kilometers is 9,321 miles. They went from Berlin to Beijing. And when you listen to his uh, TED talk, he talks a lot about how he actually hates bicycling bicycles, but he did this cycling trip. He said, I did this trip because I have a dream where we as humans believe in our in ourselves and inspire and help each other. I have a dream where we leave our comfort zones behind to chase what we truly want. So the storm, the, you can watch on YouTube, you can watch all the different phases of the trip. There were snowstorms, so it took 10 months, so he went through all of the seasons. Um, there was one point where a brown bear that was chasing him. There was one point where they were in this tent and there was a pack of wolves outside in the night. There was one point where he uh, had a hospital visit. He got so sick. There was one point where he was stranded on the side of the road. He had no money. There, his cell phone was not working. Obviously, there was no ATMs. There was nowhere he could get some money. And he was in a country that only allowed him to have a five-day pass. So he only had four days left to go 4,000 kilometers. 
but he says that this was one of the situations where he grew the most. He said the discomfort is so big, literally the only thing I can do is remind myself why I am doing this. Despite all the discomfort, I never stopped believing in my dream. And I realized what an amazing thing. If you have a vision, if you have a purpose, if you have a dream that is bigger than yourself, others feel it and they want to support you. I got messages from people all around the world told me to keep on going. These people taught me to put my dreams over my comfort. He says, it's our turn to include others in our dream and make life more about more than ourselves. I had a dream to build a school that led me through 20 countries around the world and finally back to Guatemala. So how this all started was that he went to Guatemala and he saw all these kids um, that couldn't go to school. And he loved to learn. He had gone to university and it broke his heart that there were so many poor, destitute children that had no way out. And so he actually was endorsed by Ashton Kutcher. So Guatemala has the highest illiteracy rate in South America. 18.7% of the people aged 15 and older are unable to read. Two and a half million people do not attend school. So when he got back after this trip, he had raised all this money so that he could build this school. And so he said, when I got back, I didn't see kids that were homeless and poor and destitute. What I saw was kids who had dreams to be doctors and lawyers and um, you know, mathematicians and scientists. And so he had all of the kids write down their dreams and put them in the boxes. And he put these boxes, he dug a hole in the dirt and he put these boxes in the ground and then he covered it all up and he built the school on top of these boxes. He said there were 1,500 dreams in these boxes. He said um, that he had been wanting to help the schools but it wasn't just about building the school. He said, my dream was never just to build a school. It was about making others believe in themselves to inspire and to help people to make other dreams possible. I will continue to put my dreams over my comfort. I will dream for us rather than for me. I will inspire people to turn to leave their comfort zones. So it ended up he had enough money. He actually built two schools in Guatemala um, and he's continuing on to do this magnificent work. So remember when I said it's about doing things that you know in your heart you should have done a long time ago? So as you know, uh, I've had this dream about being a minister for 30 years now. And so I had to get really honest about why it took so long. Why, why did it take so long? And what I really came to understand is it took so long because I didn't believe I could do it. Um, when I first had this dream, I went back to school to get to finish school and to get a master's in divinity. And I, was, uh, I had a home in the Poconos. I was commuting from the Poconos to New York. Uh, my husband had had a car accident and I was paying all of the bills. I was carrying quite a bit of financial weight because we had just built this house. Um, and I started to go back to school at night while I was commuting, while I was working, while I was taking care of my husband, and I just didn't think I could do it. And, and, and everything inside of me just said, I haven't got it. I just, I, just, I just don't have the strength. And that just proves my whole point, which is if you don't believe you can do it, you can't do it. When I got to the place where I came here, you all know the story about how I finally became a minister, I thought, I, I got to a place where everything inside of me was different and I wanted to be a minister. I saw myself being a minister. Everything inside of me believed it could happen. And so that's the difference. When you believe it can happen, it can happen. If you don't believe in yourself, if you don't trust God, if you don't think it can happen, it's not gonna happen. So when I started this Sunday Afternoons with Reverend Lucretia, I was very, very cautious about it because I didn't know if I could do a service every single week. And, you know, I'm still working a part-time job to pay my bills and, and, and I've got a lot of other responsibilities and I just didn't know if I could do it. About a year and a half ago, I, I thought I would try to take some services into the nursing homes because I really enjoy working with the elderly and I, and I specialize in people that are lost inside. That's my ministry. But some part of me also thought, nah, I just can't do it. I had to get to this place now where I am 
where I just said, you know what, at some point you gotta believe in yourself, but you also have to take a leap of faith and you have to trust that it's gonna happen. Um, and I asked myself, am I gonna be strong enough? And I said, you know what, I'm gonna be strong enough one week at a time, one week at a time. I'm gonna make a commitment that I'm gonna give it my absolute best effort um, and one week at a time I'm gonna make it happen. There was a part of me that was really worried about what happens if I get sick? Am I gonna be able to pull it off? Well, I had a week then I was sick and um, I didn't give up. And I, uh, there was one point it was pretty close to the day that the, that the service had to be done. And I spent one hour sleeping and one hour writing and one hour sleeping. And this went on till, uh, for about 14 hours until I finally got everything all written and all rehearsed and all ready. And, um, and I just, I 100% turned it over to God. And when I sat down at my computer, God absolutely gave me the words and absolutely made it happen. And so it's about believing in yourself and absolutely 100% trusting that God's gonna make it work. So all, all this had challenges every step of the way. So as you know, I'm also recording this. And um, so I started recording it separate from Zoom. and. I realized that there's a lot of technical details about uploading and editing videos and I didn't know anything about that and I had to take courses, you know, online to figure out how to do all that and how to edit and everything. And so I figured it out. Um, but it all comes from an accumulation of tiny, tiny, tiny little steps. So what I came to understand is that being uncomfortable is a really good thing. Um, when I first started speaking years and years ago, I got shaky and nervous and nauseous and um, I felt like I was going to faint and, and I just kept doing it. I just kept doing it over and over and over again. I've been speaking for other reasons for, for decades now. And, um, and I just realized, you know, when you're uncomfortable, you really are stretching. And I, and I realized it really is about taking risks and having faith and stretching yourself every single day. So again, it's not necessary that you have really big dreams. We're not all born champions. I'm not asking you to have some huge, big, overwhelming goal. It may just be that you wanna be healthier, that you wanna eat better, that you wanna make mashed potatoes, that you wanna learn how to take a walk every day, that you wanna read a book, that you wanna learn a new language. It may not be a huge, big goal. It may just be something to stretch yourself little by little by little. Um, it may be just about enjoying your life more and being able to relax and trust more. All of that. Um, acknowledge the greatness of every single day that you're alive. So um, here's what I know for sure. I'm absolutely 100% positive about one thing. There is no change without risk and there is no growth without change. Absolutely none. God will give you the power to step out of your comfort zone if you're willing to make a commitment. Be your best self, experience your greatest joys, live your fullest life. Because as the song says, despite all that you've been through, I know there's a winner in you. And so it is. Thank you so much for letting me be here today and letting me talk to you. Again, if you liked any part of this or if it was helpful, please hit the subscribe button or please hit the like button so that you can continue to get these videos. I greatly appreciate this opportunity to talk.